See that Elisha the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, uh, there shall be no dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Elijah said this because Moses, you know, had given that word. Now, we need to take note of these bold prophecies. No rain, Moses said, if you do these things. Joshua said, if you rebuild Jericho, your oldest son will die in the laying of the foundation. Your youngest son will die when you hang the gates. And now Elijah steps up and says, there will be no rain or dew these years, but according to my word. Now you think about that. Most people say, you're an arrogant prophet. You're just an arrogant prophet to say according to my word. It's because Elijah was speaking God's word. Well, it happened, didn't it? Yes, it did. This began the pursuit, watch now, of the prophets and the division of the prophets. In 1 Kings 17, watch now, if the enemy didn't destroy the prophets, they might actually fear God. The people might actually fear God and follow him again. The Lord told Elijah to get hence to leave and turn and hide himself. He told Elijah to hide himself by Kirath, to hide himself by covering, figuratively, to be absent, to conceal, to keep close, secret, surely, to remove yourself from the forefront. He said, and hide in the covenant. That's the word Kirath. Elijah, conceal yourself by the covenant. The cut that is before Jordan. And I commanded, watch now, the crow to feed you there. Those that attempted, I want you to listen to, to this. I heard this this morning. This is going to sound bold. I didn't know exactly how to say it. But I was thinking about how people attack, the, how people, and they attack, they attack me. I can't speak for other prophets. But I know how they try to threaten me or whatever. And the Lord said, those that do will choke at their table while they're eating. There I said it. And they begin, thus begin the adventures and journeys of Elijah. Now watch, you can't really find many other prophets at this time. He would not let the government find Elijah. While the others were hiding, watch now, Elijah was feeding the widow. Okay, okay, I'm going to say it again. While the other prophets were hiding, Elijah was feeding the widow, raising the dead. <laughs> Jezebel had cut off the prophets. That means she killed them. Obadiah hid a bunch of them in caves and fed them. While they were hid, Elijah was hid in the covenant. But was right in the middle of the supernatural. He was, he was multiplying oil and meal. He was raising the widow's son back to life. Whenever the prophets of the Lord, wherever the rest of the prophets of the Lord was, Elijah thought he was the only one left in the world that would speak God's word. There were at least two more prophets active, one in 1 Kings uh, 20, I think I wrote down thir verse 13, and 2, uh, 2, verse 35. Then came the word of the Lord to Elijah. And Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard, and on and on it goes. But here's the thing. In order to promote this religion of Baal, the prophets had to disappear. The government had to get rid of the prophets. Had to. When Donald Trump became president, about 30 of them surrounded him. Pastors, prophets, all kinds of people in ministry advising him. This just couldn't, this couldn't happen. If this happened, my God, the country might and the world might actually turn to Jesus. And so, 
During the appetite, when the appetite of the beast is being fed by the babies of the world, then the throne of Satan is starting to be raised up again. And the prophets are in the way. But you take heed, one king stretched his hand out to grab a prophet. He didn't even stretch it out to grab him. He just stretched it out and said, take him. And when he pointed his finger at that prophet, the scripture said his hand withered to his wrist. Take heed what you do to a prophet. They are the servants of the Lord. And they are the only rise and fall to him. Not to you, not to other prophets, only to him. You know why? Because prophets, are, are they put themselves out there. They put themselves out there for ridicule. They put themselves out there for whatever, uh, uh, not to do it, not to get ridicule, but they put themselves out there and they have to stand in the face of all of this stuff. And they come in the name of the Lord. And that's why the Lord said, you do my prophets no harm. You might get by with a lot of things, but you won't get by with doing prophets harm. Hallelujah. I'm almost uh, done here today on this. I hope everybody's enjoyed it, got a lot out of it. It's been some bold stuff, I know, I know. Now, <clears throat> so he approached uh, Ahab and he said this because Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard. So now the government started coveting what God's people had. They want that now. It never stops at just, if they can take children and offer them legally, and they can do away with prophets. They're not going to stop there. They come after your property next. They want what you got. Was that a song, what you're going to do when they come for you? I mean, I mean, wasn't there an old song like that? Yeah, I think I heard something, somebody playing that the other day or something. Yeah, it was what? Oh, yeah, it was a police officer's ringtone. I was standing talking to him, and it came on, what you're going to do when they come for you? Well, you know, here, here is the thing. Next thing you know, Ahab decided he wants Naboth's vineyard. But that vineyard, I heard one report said that vineyard had been in Naboth's family 500 years. And he said, I can't sell my, I can't sell my family's inheritance to you. So you know what Ahab did? He went back home with his lips stuck out, pouting. Went back home, laid down on his bed, turned his face away, crying because he can't take a man's vineyard. Well, he offered to buy it. Yeah, and you know what happens when that happens, don't you? Either you buy, sell it to him, or we'll condemn it and take it. That's what they say. So he wouldn't sell it. So Ahab turned his face to the wall. Jezebel said, what's wrong, darling? Oh, Naboth won't sell me his vineyard. She said, you're the king. I'll get you the vineyard. So she wrote letters in his name, set Naboth up and had him killed. Took the vineyard and said, now get up and go possess the land. He's dead. Go ahead and take his inheritance. Now that shows you where wicked government stands. And so, well, just take it. Just take it. Oh, yeah. Then Elijah shows up on the scene. The one prophet that was still out there doing all this. So, he comes on the scene. The Lord told Elijah, go meet him. He went and met him, and he said, because of what you did to Naboth and to take his land, that in the place where the dogs licked up Naboth's blood, they will also lick up Ahab's blood. And he said, and the Lord said he was going to take away his posterity. He was going to wipe out his line out of the way. He did just like he did Jeroboam and Baasha. And the dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that, him that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dogs will eat. Him that dieth in the field, the fowls will eat. 
But notice the bold prophecies. The dogs will lick up your blood in the same place you shed Naboth. I will cut off your line, your posterity. Uh, posterity. The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Any one of Ahab that dies in the city, the dogs will eat. Him that dieth in the field shall the fowls eat. Those were bold prophecies. Very bold. And I want you to notice, everything seemed to keep involving these dogs. Dogs, dogs, dogs. And they called the Democrats the dog party. They even called some of them blue dogs. Take heed what you do. It's time that governments are weighed now. Not by me. I'm a man. But there is someone who is more than a man. There is someone who your little flying saucers, he, he could play with them like a matchbox toy. There is someone, I'm going to tell you something, some little alien dude about this tall that looks like a monkey. You need, to, you need to pick on somebody your own size, man. You're no match for God or any of his people. Hallelujah. 